Okay, so I'm going to start now and I'm just going to record on Zoom in my computer and then that Zoom recording, I will put it up into the chat. So hopefully that that will sort out this issue that we have where we can't, where I can't, I can't share. Okay, so um, are you able to, let's see, I'm just going to share here. And I'm going to share this. Can you see my presentation? Cool. All right, so um, we are going to be talking about ancestry and sex bias in global genomics data sets. You may have seen that um, I'm a lecturer in genomics, and basically my work has been around using genome data to help inform health decisions. A lot of it has been on preventative medicine, which is we have genome data for a person who hasn't been sick yet, and then we try to identify how that data can be used for prevention. So we all know that uh, genetics is a very important contributor to any disease that we can think of. And if you had, let's say, bad genetics, then you know, you're going to have perhaps a higher likelihood of developing the main diseases that people die of. You know, could it be cancer, maybe diabetes type two, heart disease, mental diseases? All of these have a strong genetic component. And coming from the Human Genome Project, which was finished in 2003, there's been a lot of research in understanding how genetic differences in the genome actually condition us to have diseases. And there's something called genome-wide association studies. So genome-wide association studies basically use genome data from patients and controls for a particular condition, for a particular disease. Let's say diabetes, diabetes type two. So a genome-wide association study, what it does, you take thousands of cases with diabetes type two, you have that population controlled by very strict set of criteria that makes it possible that they are selected because they have the disease. And then you have some controls, which are people who are the same as the, uh, as the patients, but don't have the disease. And so if we find a higher proportion that is statistically significant, significant of mutations in your cases, in your patients that are not present in your controls, healthy people, then you can associate those variants that have been statistically significantly more present in your patients as conducive to developing the disease. And that's what genome-wide associations do. They give us, uh, there, there are massive studies that have been uh, developed in the last decade. Its main objective is to give SNPs, variants, genetic mutations that have been associated to diseases. And there is a catalog of GWAS, genome, we, we, we call them genome-wide association studies. We, we basically um, abbreviate them as GWAS, genome-wide association studies, okay? So there's the GWAS catalog that indexes all of the existing GWASs that have been developed to date. And in 2016, 
there was this study in in nature the journal nature where in the existing 373 genome wide association studies that have been developed till then which contain 1.7 million samples by samples mean individuals in cases and in controls we found or it was found that 96 percent of all of them are of european ancestry okay and this this is a problem because europeans are only one billion of the general population and we have found that those models genome-wide association studies that have been tested only, using only European ancestry population, they are going to produce models for prediction of risk, let's say for type 2 diabetes, which are a lot better that work more a lot more precisely for, for Europeans, but they don't work as well for non-Europeans. So there is a problem because the the promise of the human genome project and what we call precision medicine in general is that access to the benefits of science and research should be available to all irrespective of ancestry nationality sex whatever but this is not happening and it's not happening because the data that we use in, in order for us to understand disease, it only includes Europeans. And therefore, that data is not going to, whatever models we find, they're going to be nicely fit for Europeans, but it won't work as well for non-Europeans. In this same study in 2016, now you can see that from 373 studies, now in, in 2016, there were 2,511 studies and 35 million samples. Again, the, the, the sort of amount of Europeans that existed was still very, very high, 81%, 19% non-European ancestry. The problem is that although everyone who works in this field, we, we know of the importance of increasing the diversity there's been a new study as of June 2021, where actually the percentage that we saw here of the representation, 81% of Europeans versus non-European in gen genome-wide association studies, actually has gone up to 86%. So instead of diminishing that disparity, the, it's happening the opposite, that it seems that we are not able to, to have more inclusive, more diverse data sets. Here we see the uh, study that a colleague of mine, Fatumo et al, did uh, in 2021, where you basically you see the share of the global population. So in red, we have Europeans, which in real terms, the, they occupy, they are around one, one billion people. Then you have uh, East Asians, then you have South Asians, which is people from the Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Uzbekistan, so Central Asia, they're around 1.8 billion. And you can see that their representation is minimal, okay? Then you also have Africans, right, in purple, um, whose representation, again, is minimal. So, Diversity in genomic data, in this case, genome-wide association studies, but, but there are all the types of genomic data that we can use for, for understanding the relation between DNA variation and disease. But having a diverse representation is really important so that we can have an accurate understanding of the genetic basis that m helps this disease develop. And, and there's also this sort of question of fairness and justice, where the benefits of genomics should be applicable to people from all backgrounds. And more diversity in the, in the data sets will, will promote accuracy and applicability of this information so that we can deliver 
on the promise of the Human Genome Project. So we know that all these biases, uh, there are many biases, but we're still trying to understand where those biases are. And what we don't know, for instance, although we have an estimate for the global data that exists from the genome-wide association studies, we know that there are different diseases, breast cancer, prostate cancer, thyroid, heart, heart disease, and so on. There are GWAS, there are genome-wide association studies for all those diseases, but I hypothesize that those data sets are going to have different proportions of representation. And some of those diseases, they say uh, type 2 diabetes is more prevalent in Pakistani population. And, and, and therefore, you know, we need to really understand how this underrepresentation of ancestries in different data sets for specific diseases are actually happening. So my proposal to you for, for this work in research method is that um, I would like you to choose at one particular disease. And then based on that particular disease that you are interested in, then we are going to do some research in terms of understanding from the GWAS catalog, which um, I'll, I'll show you later. I'm not going to change here in this setup so that you guys, uh, you, get, you get all of this uh, information in, in the recording. But what I would like you to, to think about is to choose one, one disease you are interested in. If you don't have a disease that you are interested in, please let me know, and then I can assign you one, one disease so that we can go into research some diseases. Can I recommend some diseases? Yes, sure. Let's see what diseases we can recommend. Um, so, I mean, the the top diseases uh, that that we could we could think about are, for instance, prostate cancer. We could um, think about inflammatory bowel disease. We could think about diabetes type two, we could think about, um, one second. So do you have any, do you have any questions? Meanwhile, I give you a list of diseases. You have any questions? Do, do you think, is this something that would be of interest? Of course, you are not 100% obliged to um, work on this, but since this is kind of my research, I think that there's a strong incentive for you to um, basically focus on this because it's something that I, I have expertise and I can I can give you strong guidance. You know, I have expertise and experience on, on this kind of research. So... One second. I see you have one second, one second. Yeah, so here's a list. Um apart from the ones that I said glaucoma. Um lung cancer. You can also think about a disease that, you know, maybe someone in your family has or that that, that you would be interested in. Um, we could think about these ones as well. 
hypertension, yeah, yeah. So hypertension, right? Yeah, this high, high, obviously um, H, HDL or LDL cholesterol um, would be related to that. Um, you know, obesity could be a good one as well. So basically, I'm going to osteoporosis is a good one. The only thing that that needs to happen is that I'm going to stop the share. So the only thing is that we have the the GWAS catalog. So we, we are all going to do research and I'm hoping that I can show you this properly. So we are all going to look in just one database, okay? Right now, this has been really slow. Okay, so you need to take, we're all going to look at this GWAS catalog, okay? Which is the repository that contains all existing, all existing data on genome-wide association studies, okay? And we're going to look at download download and then we click where it says files and then where it says all associations okay here you click there now you get a massive table okay so basically what you need to do, let's say if let's let's find out whether osteoporosis is here. I mean, it's quite slow at the moment. Uh, this data, but but basically, I would like you to to do the following, okay? We're going to do the following. So you, and this is going to be the 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 structure of of your research projects. Okay, this is going to be your structure of the research project. So you need to first find out what are what is genome wide association study, what they do, why they are important, and then you need to create a table based on, on this uh, based on, on this data that you see. So you create a summary table of the condition that you're one condition you are interested in. It doesn't matter which one it is. You just have to be one condition that you're interested in. And then we need to you need to quantify yeah, based on that, you need to quantify what individuals, what individuals there are for 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 for, for each G was what different ancestries. So we'll perform some kind of um, analysis of the unrepresented and the representation for for different ancestries, and then we're going to compare those results. with what exists out there about, let's say, Europeans, which tends to be the ones that are better represented. And so 
then you need to write some some implications and uh, identify some gaps in terms of how how they are affecting underrepresented people. That's your research methods projects. Okay. Any questions? So the title of your project is going to be this. from this is this is your research project okay i put it in here how particular ancestry groups suffer from the six x as a consequence of lack of genomics data and this this genomics data is going to be gwas Genome-wide association studies. Does that make sense? Um, I can't. I can't attach it because it's massive. Okay. So you need to go on the internet somewhere. The table is here. Okay. So you need to go somewhere where you can download it. And then you that's the table, okay? I can't attach it because it's massive, I can't. Any questions? Any worries, any any comments? Is anyone okay with this? Are you is is this okay? You you feel that more or less that you can get started? Guys, if you can speak, speak up so I can I can hear you better. Or write in the chat, but you know. Let's let's have a little bit of interactivity. Yeah. And remember, this is just a starting point. Okay? You can you can always explore but I, I've just given you a suggestion of a, of, of a structure that you need to follow. And then make sure that you have a self-contained story with evidence of research, yeah? Sorry, uh, Elijah, I, I'm, I don't understand the question. Because I'm not sure uh, what. So looks good. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
No, I mean, hopefully, I mean, um, this is this is good enough, but you know, you need you need to now uh, embrace it, you know, make it yours, right? I'm just giving you some guidance. At the end of the day, you have you have to now become independent and 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 try to 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 find your own way on this and your own and pursue your own intellectual interests. Yeah, and it's something that really resonates to you. Which is going to be different from what somebody else's is, is is interesting. I think I think really what you need to do is, is to find the, the the perfect combination where you you need to buy into this basically. And if this is not what you, then we have to come up with something now, okay? Because because we need to have this now decided. It doesn't. It's it's just a provisional title, okay? I've given you a provisional title. Then you have to start from here. You make it yours, and then you know you you just now fly on your own, okay? Yeah. What do I mean by a self-contained story? Is that that's a very good question? Is that that story? Yeah, has a very clear beginning, a very a very clear middle, and a very clear end. And that the story contains enough information for somebody who doesn't know much to be able to follow the the, the whole the whole development the whole argument. Okay, so so it's it it has a complete amount of background. A, a, a complete amount of justification as to why this topic is important, a complete amount of original and, and, and reflection work. It's, it's almost as, as if you were writing an essay, right? Where, where you have a story and, and the story, you know, doesn't, doesn't leave you like half empty. I'm not sure if I can explain, sorry, I, I'm not sure if this is a good explanation, but it's basically a story where, where you feel that all the different bases, all the different elements of the story are, are covered somehow. Exactly. So, um, Sieda, I, I think hopefully I pronounce it. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so you got it correct. Just to clarify, this website to research into a disease that we will be interested in, they analyze and compare results with different with different ancestries within within the with first within this catalog, and then you see what the sort of imbalance is, and then you begin to think about you know what's what's out there. And then you try perhaps to look at some some other catalogs, some other publications that you might come across. But but let's start first with this small database. Let let's do some kind of analysis of the data to see that that is very different in Europeans versus some others. And then from there, then we we try to build something following your own your own research. You're following your own thinking, really. Once we've created the table summary, do you want us to email it to you? Well, at the end of the day, um, I don't want you to email me unless you really want me to give you feedback. Um, as I said, it's, this is kind of self-directed self -directed work. So you need to find your own feet and then plunge into it. And it's going to be uncertain and you're going to feel like you're not sure. Uh, but then, you know, if you don't feel sure, then you come and ask me questions. But then at some point you start, you start becoming an expert and you feel kind of confident that, that what you've been looking at, suddenly, you know, you have something to say you have you find some some interesting patterns that that you haven't seen before, and then you write about those. Uh, 
Any more questions? Okay, it doesn't seem that you have any questions. Absolutely. I think you, you should, you, you need my feedback, really. You need my feedback. Okay, guys. Um, are there any other questions? Do, do, you, do you feel comfortable? Do you think that you can get started? That's all you need to do that you have enough information to get get yourself started. And then you, you drive it yourself. Yeah, this is a research project. Some of you are writing. I can't see yet on the chat. You can also speak on the microphone, to be honest. That would be a bit quicker. Okay, uh, two of you are writing. Thank you very much for having this meeting. It makes sense now and how the critical review should be. The information given today is actually helpful. <laughs> I'm glad that it's actually helpful. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's what it's meant to be. <laughs> Um, can you guys speak? Because I don't seem to be able to see anything on the chat. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. I think I understand. Can you put the instruction in your direction? Yes, yes. I think I, I must do that. Yeah, I will. I will do that now. I will just give you a kind of summary of of what I said, and then I will. I will point at, then I also I have the, um, I think I'll probably add this to Panopto and see this, this, this recording. Okay. Um, sorry guys, I see that Namir is writing and then Mirena is writing. Okay, cool. I'm going to go now, all right? Unless you have anything so I can get myself into writing you the email and and all of that, all right? Okay, guys, thank you for your time and look forward to working with you.